Sometimes the universe asks a lot of us. Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever felt guided to let go of something big that you think you need, that you may have had in your life for quite a while, that has maybe given you a lot of security and safety, but as time has went on and have you have, as you have changed, it resonates less and less feels more and more heavy, feels more and more out of alignment, your intuition is screaming at you, let it go, you don't need it, something better is on the way. Something really awesome and exciting is on the way, but we're not gonna tell you exactly what it is. You just can kind of feel it. You can feel it once in a while in kind of a vague, faint way, but on some deep level, there's a knowing this new thing is appropriate, this new thing is waiting for you and you're going to love it. But there's this in between phase where you have one foot in the old and one foot kind of poking around at the new and we can oscillate back and forth. This is a part of a transitional period of transformation and life upgrade due to all the inner work you've done. If you're watching this video and if you actually understand all the, what I just said, which is not the most common thing for people just to spout out in a YouTube video, I can almost guarantee you're one who's on the spiritual awakening path already. You know you're going through an awakening. You know you're going through some kind of spiritual transformation. You probably invested a lot more time than anybody you know into your own personal growth, your own self-development. You really take that very seriously and Congratulations, you've probably done a lot of work on yourself. You've probably grown a lot, evolved a lot, expanded your consciousness quite a lot. And now, because of all that, it, it, you kind of did it to yourself with all that good work you've been doing. It's time to change. It's time to experience the physicalized representations and reflections of the inner changes you've already made. And that's why you feel, that's why you can sense that change is happening. Things are shifting, there's new things that you're feeling called to explore or pursue. But because this is all happening on kind of like an intuitive level, and on paper, it's not like God has presented you with this new job opportunity that guarantees X amount of money per, per year, <coughs> and it's like a no-brainer. You're, you're feeling like this part of your life is heavy and time to kind of phase out, but the new is not clear. And that's why we can kind of oscillate back and forth. But this, this, this sort of like limbo is extremely uncomfortable. It's a very, very, very uncomfortable. It like, it, it epitomizes being in the unknown. And that's why a lot of times we tend to cling to the past. It reminds me, a lot of you have been watching my videos and you know, it's a, uh, I've been talking about feeling called to write a book. I've been doing these YouTube videos for about six years now, and they've been amazing. I really enjoy them, and I've created an entire successful uh, online business from this very YouTube channel, but I'm finding myself less and less creatively satisfied. I'm finding myself uh, busier than I would like to be. There's a lot of little things that go on behind the scenes you might not be aware of that for a time it was kind of interesting and exciting, but now it's kind of wearing me down and draining and just not feeling like my purpose anymore. So, but all I had to go on for years is this alternative of writing a book, but I can't help but, but like question that from the universe. How is writing a book gonna replace my entire career, my entire business? That doesn't seem like it makes sense. It's a lot of pressure. I guess I have to be some crazy best-selling author to really make sense of that. So I, I, would, I would dabble, I would write a little bit, but then I would feel like I can't justify putting this much energy into this unknown thing. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back to work. And you probably see me on YouTube kind of coming and going back and forth time and time again. It's because I've been playing out this dynamic myself for, for a couple of years now. And the whole time, every time I go back to the old, I know better. I know I, sh I, know I shouldn't be doing this. In fact, just the other day, I went to go film a video that was not really inspired. It was to make me feel safe and secure, honestly. Um, and I went to grab my, uh, this thing. It's like my audio, my microphone here. And I was grabbing it off my shelf there. And as I grabbed it, this crystal, this uh, selenite crystal, I believe, my wife said they're fragile. 
it like slipped off the, the shelf and shattered on the ground. Now, of course, Vic, Vic, people drop things. I know. It was more about my intuitive, my, my initial intuitive hit as it happened. I knew, I knew what it meant. I knew it was a sign. I knew it was the universe saying, you're clinging, dude. You don't need to make this video. You just think you do. You're just afraid not to. And, and you keep clinging out of fear, you're gonna have these experiences of dissonance. Now in the past, my friend, I would judge myself harshly. It's almost ironic that I make all these videos because I'm what I would call a notorious clinger. I'm probably like you where my intuition can see a lot further ahead or can sort of sense further ahead that I'm actually emotionally prepared and willing to travel. And that limbo, that one foot in, one foot out phase, I'm always kind of clinging back and forth. But I've learned to be patient with myself. I've learned that there's value in clinging. I know you don't normally hear that, but the more I cling, what, hap what happens the more you cling? The more problems you pretty much attract into your life, right? Well, maybe I need those problems. Maybe I need that dissonance so I can feel safe jumping into the unknown, which is no picnic. It's not easy to jump into the unknown and let go of something that on paper you need. On paper, I need my online business. It's how I feed my family. And the idea to exchange it for a freaking book that has not been written. I've never written a book. How do I, I can't expect them just gonna, it's gonna like just be this amazing thing. It's a lot, it's a, it's psychologically, it's a lot to kind of bear. And this is just a metaphor. I'm not just trying to talk about myself. You maybe have your own sort of scenario going on in your own life, but here's what tends to happen. The more you cling, the more you learn. The more clarity you get, the more you're pushed back. You almost kind of like, there's like a springboard effect. The more you cling, you shoot back and write the book a little more. Put more energy, invest more energy into this new thing. And there needs to be this kind of transitional period sometimes for the new to take form more to where you can see, oh, 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 there's all these aspects I was blind to previously. And slowly but surely, this transition kind of can happen quite naturally. And again, my main advice is not to beat yourself up for not being this like Zen hero that can just blindly catapult themselves time and time again into the future unknown. It's, it's not easy. Most of us don't realistically do it. But if you understand that even, at least in my opinion and experience, these transitional periods seem to be also part of perfect timing. Almost like the universe knows that we're gonna wave this book idea in front of Victor and he's gonna resist it and swat it away about 57 times before he actually does it. So this new path ahead, we're gonna kind of put on hold as Victor becomes okay and safe and does, goes through his process and then commits. I find it's all perfect, always perfect, my friends. Another big aspect of, it, of this is when you're in this kind of middle zone, you tend to also confront a lot of your deeper issues, your deeper still yet unresolved issues. It's almost like not only do you feel torn, not only do you not feel safe in the old life or the future life, you feel like you've been cast off by the universe and you're on your own. Not only that, but oftentimes we go through like another dark night of the soul where our deepest doubts and insecurities, mainly our, our self-worth, issues, they really come to the forefront because this new thing, if you have even an idea of what it might be, it's very common to feel small in comparison to it. Like writing a book. Who am I to write a book? Who am I to write a book? I've never written a book. People actually email me all the time because my grammar is horrible. If you've read my emails, like. I oftentimes don't even capitalize the first letter in, in, a, in, in a sentence and I do all sort of break all the rules grammatically speaking. So it's very, it's hard for me to believe I can write a book. And then what happens? I love to read. I love to read books from like really awesome authors that are a thousand times better than me. And then I compare myself to them and, and feel even smaller and smaller and smaller. But what is that? It, it, it sucks to feel that way. It sucks to feel small. It sucks to feel unworthy of your dream. But that forces you to look at that. It forces you to examine why would I feel unworthy? 
Why do I not think I can learn and grow and, and, and like take my time becoming good and sort of fitting into this new thing? Why not me? Why not you? That's the question. And that's the question that you're kind of forced to answer when you're in this limbo, one foot in, one foot out, transitional period of your spiritual awakening. You're forced to answer it. You're forced to look in deep inside and see why do I feel unworthy in the first place? I can't imagine when I was like a day old, I, my little baby self felt unworthy. What happens when my, my buddy Aaron Dowdy always says, what happens to babies? They cry and they get milk. They cry, they get their diaper changed. They cry, and they're, they're very entitled little beings, are they not? They, they know their worth, but something must have happened. Some type of conditioning, some type of conditioning must have been imposed upon me throughout my life to warp my self-perception into thinking and buying in to this illusion of unworthiness. Something must have happened. What? And that's what this can offer. Oh, oh, oh. I've had, a, I've been in this. I'm sharing about this because I'm going through it right now. I've had so many insights into like my childhood and just different unconscious parts of myself that have influenced this distorted perception of me and what I'm capable of. And it's been so illuminating. So this one foot in, one foot out phase, you're warming yourself up, you're becoming more comfortable, you're gaining energy and momentum, and you're transforming very deep, deep levels of your consciousness. You're, you're, you're transcending a lot of heavy weights that have held you back for a very long time so that when you do finally feel ready and are ready and naturally take that next step and naturally part with what you know is no longer serving you, you're a new person. You are ready, you have adapted and you are ready to take the world by storm and then when that new thing starts to show itself, it's so obvious why everything had to happen the way it did. You're so grateful for the universe, your, your trust and, and, and God, if you will, is completely restored. Your mind is blown. And there you are, a new person sailing off into the sunset for yet another phenomenal journey that you have earned through all of your work.